This day's video is going to be a bit of a strange one. I only have this one section of footage that I shot in the morning as I was leaving the camp at the Stuttebecker campsite just outside of the town of Lietzow. I'm approaching the embankment that connects this sub-island of Jasmund to the main island of Rügen called Mutland. I don't even get that far because it's been raining all morning. It started at about six in the morning and by this point when I'm on the trail it's already quite humid and foggy and wet. You'll see as the video progresses that my little camera gets increasingly foggy and the picture gets worse and worse and eventually the rain gets heavy enough that I have to turn it off and pack it into my bag. I don't manage to get the camera out again for the rest of the day so unfortunately this is the only bit of footage that I have from this day. But once I cross the embankment onto the main island of Mutland I am for the first time in some actual forest not along the coast or on sand dunes, but a forest that extends for several kilometers along the western side of the island. From there, I will enter into the city of Bergen auf Rügen, which I believe is the largest city on the island, and pass through the town square and alongside some churches and through an industrial area and eventually through some city gardens and back out into the fields. I then make my way into another large forest, but this one is mostly road until I finally get to my camp for the evening, which is on this lovely little farm just south of Bergen on the way to the town of Putbus on the coast. There was a really nice farmer there who had already set up a sort of mini camp that he told me he set aside for people doing the pilgrimage trail that extended across the island of Rügen and made its way to Santiago de Compostela in Spain. I wasn't really familiar with that as a thing that people did, that people would be following the pilgrimage trails across Europe, but he said there was someone who stayed on his farm the previous year who was making his way down towards Spain. So it does happen from time to time, just seems to take place outside of, at least of my notice. But that was, I thought that was really interesting. And he had this whole area set up with what looked like it was supposed to be an outdoor shower. There was a little platform and a string that was between some trees. And it was a flat area where it was, I think if it had, if the grass had been mowed, it would have worked really well for setting up some tents. But that was about 20 kilometers farther down the trail from where I am right now. Right now I'm making my way through a little stand of trees and eventually we'll walk across a beach right before the embankment, which is about as far as I get before the rain gets too heavy for me to be able to use the camera anymore. I should probably also mention that this is the second day in a row that I'm covering a section of trail that's longer than 20 kilometers, which is going to end up taking quite a toll on my feet. And so for the next couple days after this, the sections I have to the next camp are only, I think one was 10 kilometers and the one after that is also only maybe 11. It turned out after hiking this trail that there were a number of reasons why that's the case. I have learned in the interim that my boots for this hike were too tight and were also not really the right kind of shoes for this kind of hiking. I also really overloaded my pack. I think at the start of the hike it was 23 kilograms, which is I think close to 50 pounds, maybe a little more. It's way too much for this kind of hiking. It's too much, I think, for just about anything except mountaineering or some larger expedition, but for a week-long hike where I'm mostly just walking along roads, it's way too much. And the amount of wear that put on my feet ended up accumulating. By the end of this hike, when I make my way into Strauss and my feet are really hurting and are covered in blisters, it was bad. But for now, I'm still doing okay. 
I'm going to be tired by the end of this day, by the time I get to the farm, but I will have lots of time to sit and rest up my feet before the next day. And like I said, the day after this is quite an easy hike. So I had plenty of time to recuperate. I think this is just going to be something that I learn over time as I make small improvements to my gear load out. The next longer hike that I went on after this one was the Vorsteig about a month later. That's one of my favorite hikes in Germany. It's about 100 kilometers in a loop around the German-Czech border south of Dresden. And by that point, a month later, I had a lighter backpack that was also, because it was smaller, had less room for stuff. So I ended up not overloading it quite so badly. I think I managed to shave five kilos off of my total pack weight, which is a really considerable reduction in weight. And like I said before, I think I'm going to have to get some new hiking boots. So I'm not sure if the way I pace myself on this trip on Rügen is going to be something I keep doing. It may be the case that as I make improvements to my gear, as I learn better how to manage longer distances on the trail, I can maybe do longer stretches where I don't have to have a couple days of lighter um, distances so that I can recuperate from doing 20 kilometer days. It may be the case if, that I get to the point where my gear is light enough and my feet are in good enough shape that I could consistently be putting in 20, 30 kilometer days without any problem. But that's going to have to be something that we see about in the future. Like I said, for now, I'm still hiking using a very heavy pack and very heavy boots. I'm still kind of thinking in this old fashioned style of how you hike trails that I'm gradually learning to unlearn. So we'll see how it goes. But for now, I'm doing mostly okay. It's still only about eight in the morning at this point, And I have about six, maybe seven hours of hiking left ahead of me. It's going to rain for the next couple hours. But I think by the time I get to the town of Bergen, that clears up. And then it's sunny and nice for the rest of the day until I get to camp. By the time I do get to camp, I have just enough time to set up my tent and unpack my food and get it put into this little trailer thing that he had set up next to the camp site so that I could cook my dinner. And by the time I was doing that, there came another round of really heavy rains that went on for a few hours. But by the end of that, once the rain cleared up for the evening, there was a really lovely sunset and it was really peaceful and pleasant to watch. So I spent a lot of time just sitting in the little trailer, eating my dinner and just looking out at the sunset. I posted a couple pictures of that on my, on my Substack blog too, that you can see if you want. But for now, as you can see, we're coming up on the beach and the rain is getting heavy enough that I am going to have to pack away my camera and it's going to stay in my bag for the rest of the day, unfortunately. So this is going to be the point where I will wrap up this video. I will probably not be able to post another of the days from my hike on Rügen until the new year. So it's going to be maybe a week or two. It's the holidays. But I hope you've enjoyed at least this little stretch of video that I managed to shoot in the morning on my third day of the hike. I will be continuing to post updates as best I can. I want to take one little bit of one moment here at the end also to mention I'm very happy I'll be posting probably a video about this later on, but I have been in touch with the European Ramblers Association over the last couple months as I've been working on these hikes, and they have very graciously agreed to help publicize my work on these trails. So there will probably, hopefully, be a few more people coming into this channel to watch some of this material. If you are new to the channel, welcome. I'm glad you're here. And I will hopefully be able to start having more material for you in the new year as I get back out on the trail. It's, like I said, it's going to be a, a while. My last hike, my feet got pretty badly banged up. So I am recuperating and soon, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll be able to get myself a new pair of hiking shoes and I'll start going out on some shorter day hikes, probably in early January. 
I also am planning on doing a longer section of the E10 in March. If everything goes well, I'll be in good shape that I can make an attempt at maybe about a two week long hike through Austria. I'm really looking forward to that. But that's another scale of difficulty up from what I'm doing here. So it's, again, it's going to be a building process and a learning process for me as I figure out how to do this stuff. It's not something I ever really trained to do before, so a lot of it is very new. But that's all in the future. Um, for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I would be happy to hear any comments you might have about this video or any of the others, and I hope to see you in the new year. So thank you for watching. You do all that usual social media stuff of liking and subscribing and commenting and whatever, and I will see you soon.